cube roots. The volume of a cube can be found by using the formula of volume equals length times width times height. But since a cube has all equal sides, the length equals the width, which equals the height. So the volume of a cube can be found by multiplying the length times the length times the length, or since you're multiplying the same thing three times, it's to the length to the third. So the product of three equal factors is now called the cube of a number because of this relationship with the volume of a cube. And you can see we have it with this example. We have a cube that has a length of five, a width of five, and a height of five. So the length, the width, and the height are all equal to five. So we're multiplying that length three times, that five times five times five, which is equal to five to the third, which is 125. So the volume is 125, and it's the volume of a cube, so we say that's five, not to the third, but we can say that that's five cubed. So let's review more perfect cubes. Let's say we have n is our first 10 counting numbers, and then we're cubing that number. So we would have one cubed, two cubed, three cubed, four cubed, five cubed, and so on and so forth. That's equal to one times one times one. Then we have two times two times two. Then we have three times three times three, and so on and so forth. Let's complete the first 10 perfect cubes. So if we fill in our list, we have one cubed is one, two cubed is eight, three cubed is 27, four cubed is 64, five cubed is 125, six cubed is 216, seven cubed is 343, eight cubed is 512, nine cubed is 729, and 10 cubed is 1,000. And again, we found those numbers by taking the number n and cubing it. We're multiplying that number by itself three times. Now, if we have something cubed, we would have the inverse of cubing. So that's asking the question, what number was cubed or raised to the third power? And let's look at some examples to get the answer of 125. What number was cubed or raised to the third power to get an answer of one? What number was cubed or raised to the third power to get an answer of eight? If we look back at our chart, we can find our answers. So because five cubed is equal to 125, the answer of what number was cubed or, cubed or raised to the third power to get an answer of 125 is five. Because one to the third equals one, that's the number we're raising or cubing to get an answer of one is one. One to the third or one cubed is equal to one. And since two to the third or two cubed equals eight, the number that was cubed or raised to the third power to get eight is two. We will now explore an operation that undoes cubing a number. To remind you, cubing a number is to multiply it, the number by itself three times. So cubing four, for example, is to multiply four times four times four to get 64. So four cubed equals 64. An inverse of cubing would have you start with the cube 64 and then return us back to the original number four. That operation is defined as taking the cube root. So the cube root is an inverse operation to cubing. This is the symbol for taking a cube root. It looks like the radical symbol, very similar to the square root, except we have an addition of the three, this tiny little three kind of on the top sitting on the radical. So that is the cube root symbol. So given that, if we go back to our example of four cubed equals 64, it follows that then the cube root of 64 equals four. Performing the operation and then the inverse operation returns us to where we started. In this case, the cube root of 64 being four tells us that four multiplied by itself three times equals 64. Now cube roots don't pose some of the challenges of square roots. So here we have, for example, the idea of being careful about the square root with positive and negative answers. We don't have to worry about that with 
cube roots. For example, 4 cubed is equal to 64, but negative 4 cubed is equal to negative 64. The original sign of the number is preserved when cubing it because 4 times 4 times 4 is equal to 64. When 4 is positive 4, we have a positive product. And negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 is equal to negative 64. We have a negative product. So we don't have to worry about principal roots or using context to find the sign of the answer. It will come when you take the cube root. You'll see it in the original problem right away. Similarly, the cube root of a variable or of variables is more straightforward as well. For example, if we take the cube root of x cubed, that would equal cube. And this is since cubing preserves the, si preserves the sign of the original number, we don't care if the original number is negative or not because it can equal a negative number. You can have the cube root of a negative number and it can equal a negative number. And taking the cube root also preserves the sign. So this works for all numbers, all variables, and all values of x. We also have no problem finding the cube root of negative numbers. Real cube roots of negative numbers exist, whereas their square roots do not. If you recall, taking the square root of a negative number led us to the no, rule, no real root but now, if we take the cube root of a negative number, it will just be a negative root. So let's try finding different cube roots. Let's put this all together. So we have the third root of 27. That's again asking what number cubed or to the third is equal to 27. Now we have the third root of negative 8. And at first, again, if you're thinking of square roots, we would say, oh my gosh, this is not okay we would have no real square root, but this is a cube root. So this is okay, we can find what number multiplied three times by itself would equal negative eight. We can have the negative on the outside of the cube root. For example, this is asking what's the negative cube root of 125. And then we can have the cube root of positive numbers as well, very similar to the first one here. The last one we have the cube root of 216. Again, all cube roots, so we're asking what number to the third equals the number underneath the cube root. And this third example will have to make our answer negative. So the first answer is three. The cube root of 27 equals three because three cubed equals 27. The cube root of negative eight equals negative two because negative two cubed equals negative eight. Negative cube root of 125 equals negative five because five cubed equals 125, and then the negative on the outside tells us to make our answer negative. And the cube root of 216 equals six because six cubed equals 216. So here we have a list of our positive whole number cubes. So the whole number is in the right column are cubes of the whole numbers in the left column. The numbers in the left column are the cube roots of those in the right column. If you multiply a number in the left column by itself twice, you get the number in the right column, or including that first number if you took it, so it's a total of three times. For instance, let's say we looked at this row here. We have the number nine and its cube 729. Right, nine times nine times nine is equal to 729. Let's say we chose this row here. We know that four multiplied three times. Four times four times four is equal to 64. Seven times seven times seven is equal to 343. One times one times one is equal to one. So you can take any number in the left column and multiply it by itself and then two more times and then you get the number in the right column. Now here we have this list where as you can see, the signs of the cubes of negative numbers are also negative. So here we have a list of negative numbers and their cubes are negative. And every negative cube has a negative cube root, they match. Now beyond these whole numbers, cubing any rational number results in a perfect cube as well. So here are more examples. We have the third root of 125 equals five 
because again, by definition, five cubed is equal to 125. Now we have the cube root of negative 125 is negative five because negative five cubed equals negative 125, so that's a difference in signs. We have the cube root of negative 512 is equal to negative eight because negative eight cubed is equal to negative 512. And the cube root of one is equal to one because one to the third or one cubed equals one. So notice our signs are matching up. When you cube a positive number, it equals a positive number. When you cube a negative number, it equals a negative number. So you just have to be careful of which one you're talking about and pay attention when you're taking that cube root. However, many rational numbers are not the result of cubing a number. So not all rational numbers are perfect cubes. So given a rational number, how can we determine if it is a perfect cube? Like we learned with perfect squares, for a rational number to be a perfect cube, its numerator and denominator must be perfect cubes. So here's an example. We have the cube root of eight over 27. So we can split that up into the cube root of eight over the cube root of 27, which is equal to two over three. This example shows how to find the cube root of a fraction. And it shows that eight over 27 is a perfect cube with two thirds or two over three as its cube root. This is an example of a perfect cube that is not a whole number. So note that for this fraction to be a perfect cube, both its numerator and denominator needed to be perfect cubes. We had to be able to take the cube root of eight and the cube root of 27. It wouldn't have worked if it was the cube root of 26 or the cube root of 28 or the cube root of seven or the cube root of 10 in the numerator. It had to be perfect cubes in the numerator and denominator in order for us to do and complete this example. Any rational number consisting of a perfect cube in the numerator and denominator is itself a perfect cube. That provides an infinite number of perfect cubes between any two numbers, for instance, between just zero and one. And then you just put one in the numerator and keep putting the next highest whole number perfect cube in the denominator, since one is a perfect cube itself. Since the whole number perfect cubes extend to infinity, so too do the number of rational perfect cubes between zero and one, or between any two whole number perfect cubes. So here we can see this example. Here's what we're talking about. Here is the series of rational perfect squares with one in the numerator. So see, we have the cube root is one over one. The number is one over one. The cube root of one eighth is one half. Of one twenty seventh is one third. Of one sixty fourth is one fourth and so on and so forth. While we stop at one one thousandth, there is no limit to how small these can become. And there's nothing unique about having one in the numerator. We really could use any perfect cube in the numerator. So you could have eight in the numerator or 64 in the numerator and combine it with any other cube root in the denominator and that fraction would still be a cube root. 